Hello, everybody, and welcome to our first Wednesday workshop. I'm really excited to introduce this new type of webinar series that Employer Outreach is introducing to our employers. Um, the Wednesday workshop will be used um, to sprinkle in throughout the year whenever we have new quick hot topics that we want to discuss with our employers and to cover topics thoroughly. Um, the point of the Wednesday workshop is to be quick and helpful. Uh, so today we're going to be covering one of the hottest topics that we have every year and that's employer statements and surcharge. Um, we will be recording this today so if you ever want to revisit it it should be available on our website in the next week or so. Um, before I get into everything, I just want to let everyone know that the employer statements and surcharge will be available sometime mid-August. Um, so just keep your eyes peeled for an employer bulletin that should be um, emailed to the districts mid-August. And with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So at the end of each fiscal year, SERS issues an employer statement that recaps the fiscal year's activity. So basically it's an itemized receipt of all of the financial activity that happened throughout the year for your district. When the employer statement is available, you will receive the notice from employer services. So in the past, we've sent out special notices or bulletins. This year, we will issue an employer bulletin um, where we will cover the employer statement and surcharge and how to pay both of them but we'll also be addressing additional year-end topics to help our employers fully end your fiscal year with us. Um, just as a helpful tip in regards to the employer statement and surcharge, they will be available on the same day, so that means that the due date for both activities will be the same day. Um, so they will both be due 30 days from the day that we announce that the employer statements and surcharge are available. So to um, pull your employer statement, everything is done through ESERS. So in years past, we used to mail the employer statements to our district. Now everything is electronic through the ESERS web portal. So the first thing that you will do is you will log into ESERS. Then you will click on the employer statement application in ESERS, and it's in, on that toolbar on the left-hand side. On the employer statement maintenance screen, you'll select the fiscal year for the statement that you want to view. So if you see this little screenshot on the right hand side of your screen, we capture five year history for our district. So if you need something um, before 2017, just shoot us an email and we can pull that employer statement for you. Um, but for this year, you'll want to click on the 2021 fiscal year to download. So for some districts, you might have a pop-up blocker and you'll have to um, allow the pop-up blocker so that your PDF will appear. Um, if you cancel the pop-up blocker, your employer statement will not populate for you. So it's very important that you make sure you cancel your pop-up blocker. A notice will pop up on your screen. It's not something you have to go into your settings for. So there will be a notice at the bottom of your screen. Um, so on this screen, this is a breakout version of what the employer statement looks like. So if you see this first, um, the number one, it includes the employee and employer activity. And this first page just breaks down all of the activities throughout the fiscal year. This number two is highlighting the employee activity portion of your employer statement. Um, and it will list the posted contributions, which is the employer the reporting that was uploaded or manually added from your district. There's a payments column and then there's a net. So it will um, list any difference between the two columns. The third box right at the top of the screen, the net amounts at the top of the statement are the beginning balances row. And this will show the balance from the prior fiscal year. So um sorry oh oh 
Um, so on the employee side, you might have a net balance, but on the employer side, you might have a net balance also. Um, this fourth block right here, this is for foundation participating districts. If SERS collects your surcharge through the foundation and there are zero dollars listed in the August and a portion of your foundation payment listed in the September months for your foundation payment column, that's because we pull your surcharge payment from your foundation in the months of August and September. So to fully um, pay your surcharge balance, you might see zero dollars for August and a portion of September missing, and that's because it's going towards your surcharge. The number five is highlighting prior fiscal year activity for the district. And this will, row will show payment made for any prior fiscal year activity. In this example, it shows the payment for the previous statement balance. So over here, it'll show that there was a um, statement balance paid in the prior for the prior fiscal year. And the sixth highlighted is um, providing a breakdown of additional types of payments that were submitted to SERS. So there are different types of payments outside of the reporting payments that are submitted to us. So on the seventh item on the statement is highlighting um, a breakdown of additional payments. So it's kind of a continuation from the first page. We've tried to make the employer statement one page, but because of all the itemized um, items for the statement, it is two pages. Um, so the seventh box is just highlighting a continuation from the first page. <clears throat> The eighth row is just highlighting your ending balances. And then the ninth item, if you have an employee balance that is due, this is important for districts to pay attention to because sometimes it's overlooked because districts will pay more attention to the employer activity side. But if there is an employee balance that is due, the amount will be listed in the net column in the ending balances row. So that's what the nine is highlighting. If there is a net employee amount and is due to SERS by the specified date in the employer bulletin that will be sent out in mid-August. If your district is owed a refund on the employer activity side, the refund will not be mailed out until the employee net ending balance has been cleared. So if there's a refund due to the district, but there is an employee balance listed on the employer statement, that balance will need to be paid before any refund is issued to the district. Then the 10th item on the statement is highlighting any amount due to SERS. So any amount due to SERS on, this, on, to SERS on the statement, regardless of the amount, must be paid by the date specified by SERS. If there is an amount, if it's listed amount due to district, that amount will be issued within 30 days back to the district in a refund check. If your refund amount is $25 or less, it will reflect as a credit memo for you to use, <clears throat> excuse me, it will reflect as a credit memo for you to use against any fiscal year 2022 liability, or you can request it as a refund back to your district please email your request to employer services at ohscrs.org. Um, foundation participating districts cannot pay their statement balance with foundation funds. <clears throat> so <clears throat> to pay your employer statement, I'm sorry, I got a little... Uh, to pay your employer statement, you have to go to the payment remittance application. Nikki, can you go back one slide? I'm so sorry. The employer statement balance will need to be paid through the payment, a payment remittance, I'm sorry, a payment remittance is required with the employer statement payment if your district owes, serves uh, an amount 
within 30 days. And you would go to the payment remittance application and you would click on new payment remittance. And in the payment remittance for your employer statement, you would select any liability with the pay date prior to and including June 30th of 2021. And you would have to complete the payment remittance process that way. Um, unfortunately, we can't just roll them all together into one liability for you to select and move on with your payment process. You have to select all of the remaining balances from June 30th, 2021 um, and prior in order for it to calculate to be your employer statement balance. Um, I also want to remind districts that if you are paying by check, that's totally fine. You would follow the payment remittance process, but we don't want any checks mailed into the office. We would like for them to be sent to the lockbox. Um, for more detailed instructions on how to download your employer statement, you can visit our employer site underneath publications and forms, and you can down download the ESER's how to for employer statements. Okay, we can move on. So the next item that will be available the same day that your employer statement is available is the employer surcharge. So the surcharge is, a, is an additional employer charge used exclusively to fund healthcare. It's calculated at 14% of the difference between the employee's annual compensation and the minimum compensation amount. The surcharge is limited to 2% of each district's total qualified SERS payroll and it's subject to a statewide limit of 1.5% of SERS's eligible compensation. So you might be asking yourself, what is the minimum compensation amount? So for fiscal year 2021, the minimum compensation amount is $23,000. And this amount is determined by our system's actuaries annually. So once the employer surcharge is available, employer services will notify the districts once it's available. It's available. I, I know I keep repeating myself, but it's just really important that you remember that the surcharge and the employer statement will be available on the same day. So once you're logged into ESERS, you want to click on the surcharge application on the left-hand side. It will give you a breakdown of the charge along with a list of the employees that are on your report. So if you want to print off the report, you would just click on the export to Excel button and you would be able to export it into an Excel document and you would be able to print it off that way. So when you export your surcharge report, the only individuals that belong on the surcharge report are members reported during the fiscal year who earned below the minimum compensation amount of $23,000. We do have a few exceptions to the report. The first one are any members who retired or refunded their account or received a disability benefit effective prior to July 1, members who passed away before July 1, and reemployed Ohio public retirees. You are still able to exempt your employees from the report. If you are reviewing your report and you see that there is a member who passed away during the fiscal year or that they are a reemployed retiree, go ahead and email their name and their last four digits of their social security number to employer services at, at ohscrs.org. Please keep in mind that we ask you to submit your surcharge exceptions, but it may not make a difference in your payment amount that is due to SERS. If it does make a difference in your payment amount, we will recalculate your surcharge and we will email you your new amount due. So the surcharge payment is due the same day that your employer statement balance is due. It's due within 30 days from the date employer services notifies you that the surcharge was available on ESERS. A payment remittance is also required with your surcharge payment. The surcharge payment on your payment remittance application is different than the employer statement balance. For surcharge, it's a line item in your unpaid liabilities panel in the payment remittance application. So you just have to click on that liability in order to pay it. 
the payments must be received by the due date or your district will be subject to a penalty. So we don't accept postmark dates or mailed dates. It has to be received by the due date. So if you're a foundation participating district, you may be thinking, oh, I wonder if our foundation payments cover our surcharge amount. And if you want to um, log into ESERS, you can check your um, foundation deduction letter to see if we are collecting for the surcharge through your foundation payments. If we do, we automatically deduct it from your August and September foundation payments. Um, so again, if you aren't sure if we are collecting it, you can always call employer services, but you can also log into ESERS and pull your foundation deduction letter to see if we are pulling your um, collecting for your surcharge payment. That concludes our Wednesday workshop. Were there any questions that I can answer? Hi, Katie. I just wanted to jump in and let everyone know that after the webinar, we are going to send a follow-up email that will have a copy of the slideshow and the couple documents that we talked about how to read the employer statement and the surcharge fact sheet for everybody. Carlisa, I also forwarded another question to you. I'm not sure if you saw that. I'll just read it to you guys. Can you review the remittance procedure for the employer employer statement balance? Yes. So we um on the employer how to which is there a way? Can I pull it up on our website or um it gives a better detail of how you go through the payment remittance to pay your employer statement. Um, but basically, in the payment remittance application, when you click on new payment remittance, it will open your payment remittance screen. And in the unpaid liabilities panel, all of the unpaid liabilities from June 30, 2021 and prior if there are still remaining balances out in your payment remittance, those remaining balances, if you total them together, should equal the amount of the amount due to SERS on your employer's statement. So you would just select all of those liabilities and you would hit add selected to pay and it would move those liabilities down to your liabilities to pay panel and in the payment amount fields in the liabilities to pay panel, you would type in each remaining balance of those liabilities. That amount will total the employer statement balance if you have an amount due to SERS. From there, you would click next at the top of the screen and that takes you to the payment type screen where you would choose if you're paying by ACH debit, ACH credit, or check, and you would just follow the same payment procedures that you typically do following that screen. Um, yeah, Katie, were you looking for the how-to employer statement or was there another how-to? No, just the employer statement. Okay. Okay, there we go. So um, if we just scroll down to the fourth page, it gives a better breakdown of the payment remittance. It's a little smaller to see. I hope everyone can see, but after you click new payment remittance, it'll take you to the payment remittance screen. If we just scroll down a little bit more, you want to check all of the boxes next to the liabilities with the reporting dates prior to June 30. So in the screenshot, um, 
this user would select these liabilities because they are prior to June 30. So you want to pay attention to your reporting date. And if you take these remaining balances, you would add these together and they should total the amount due to SERS on your employer statement. So in this example, it says employee, the liability type is employer contributions. So I'm 99% sure in this example, this was a foundation participating district. And what this means is that there was a foundation shortage. So that ties back to the salary estimate where we calculated the foundation payments that we would pull and they weren't, the payments weren't high enough to cover all employer contributions for that fiscal year. So if you're a foundation participating district, you might be thinking, well, I don't do anything with the employer contributions. You will when it comes to statement time because you will have to fulfill these, um, you'll have to pay these unpaid liabilities. And we can't cover these liabilities with the next fiscal year foundation payments. These will have to be a direct pay to us, whether by check, ACH debit, or ACH credit. Was that too much information or not enough? I, um, for the foundation participating districts, it can get a little confusing. She said that was perfect, thank you. Okay, okay good. And yeah, if you have any follow-up questions, you can always email employer service or you can email me directly. Well, if there are no more questions, it was thank you for attending our first Wednesday workshop. That the whole point of these are to be quick and to the point answer your questions, um, and so you can be in and out and moving on with the rest of your day. Thank you. Have a nice day.